I guess the takeaway is, if you want to pass data from the child to the parent, it's like the child is really twisting the parent's arm to accept whatever data it wants to feed to the parent. A study of state and props. Let's first establish that we're using React's function components as opposed to class components. And let's take a simple example of a text input and displaying the text as the user is typing. Now, to understand where state lives and how it works, let's rewind to a time that state didn't exist yet and everyone was still using HTML and pure JavaScript, since this is the foundation of React. And we can see if this comparison is helpful. We'll have to add the HTML and JavaScript files In the HTML, we insert the reference to the JavaScript file in the head. And in the body, let's have a div with the ID of input containing the label and input with an ID of username. Below it, we'll have a display section. Let's say a P tag with hi there and then the span with the ID of display, where the input text will be displayed. In the user input.js, we grab the username and display by their respective IDs, and then set up our input handler function, where the inner HTML of our display is set as the target value. Then add an event listener to the username input where we're listening out for the input and applying our input handler function. What is the data that we're changing here? The text in the input field, right? That will be our state. State is basically any data that we know will change at some point. Let's set up our React project now and see how React handles the same process of user inserting some text in an input field and then having that text displayed underneath using state and set state, which is our use state hook. We'll have exactly the same label and input. Let's import use state from React and initialize it like this const square brackets the name that we want to name our current state, comma, and the name of the function that updates that state equals useState. We'll have the initial value within the double quotation marks within the parentheses. And in the input tag, let's have a handle input function on change. In our handle input function, we'll set the username state to e.target.value, which is whatever the user is typing. And down here, all we need to do is add the username in curly braces to display the data. As you can see, this is already a lot simpler than working with pure JavaScript. It's much more flexible and reusable. If we break it down, what's happening is that the user starts typing. We're capturing each letter with the React set state function that we've named set username. And the captured data is stored in our username variable or state in React Lingo. So whenever we call on this username state, we have access to whatever data is stored there. And whenever the text inside the input field changes, set username function can capture any updates and store the new information within the username state. And when we use username, it will always give us the most up-to-date information. The default value of text input here, because we know it's gonna be text, we'll set it as an empty string. But if you know that the value will be a numeric value, you can set it as zero. And if you know it's gonna be an array, you can set it as an empty array as symbolized by square brackets. But it can also have a specific default value, which you'll see later on as we're tidying up the code. For now, let's move on to props. Props is short for properties, values associated with a JavaScript object. In React, you can think of props as arguments to a function in JavaScript or attributes in HTML. Because React works in components, 
anything more than a basic foundational application, you have a component hierarchy. As the name suggests, it's a hierarchy of components, so you will have one or more child components within a parent component. The state captures and remembers the data within any component. But how do we pass data from one component to another? Props. As we're working with a component hierarchy, we're concerned with two scenarios. First, how do we pass data from a child component to a parent component? And second, how do we pass data from a parent component to a child component? The rule of thumb is data should flow downwards. So the most optimal approach is for the data to pass from parent to child. But there may be times where you need to pass data from child to parent. It's much more convoluted this way, but it's not impossible. Let's have a look. Using the same name input example, let's create a child component that's going to hold a button. And on click, we change the username that's being displayed. So to create a child component, we add a new file. I like to use .jsx for child components, but .js is equally fine. So let's call this change name .jsx. Set it up the React way and add in the button. We add the child component into its parent component, which is app.js here, just like this. Once you press enter, VS Code usually imports it for you at the top. Sometimes it may not, and sometimes you might have to check the capitalization. But that's our simple component hierarchy. We have our parent component, our app.js, with the input field and some brief greeting messages. And we have our child component underneath with a button. On click of the button, we want to handle the prop change i.e. we want to change the name that the user put in. Let's have a look at how to change the value of the name in the child component and pass the data back up to the parent. This is the more complex way of doing things. And by the end of it, you should get the sense that this is not the preferable approach and that you do not want to be doing this frequently. So bear with me. In our child component, when we click on the button, in our handle prop change function, what we want to do is to change the name, right? In order to make this change, we need to do it via a function. Let's call it change name. And we want to change the name to there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, to help us hide the name that the user actually put in. As you can see by the error message, the function has not been defined yet because we need to define it in our parent component. So within the change name tag here in app.js, let's add in the change name function as a prop like this. What this function wants to do is to set the username as what will be in the parentheses. And then in our child component, we just need to add in the prop like this at the top here and then apply props to our change name function here like this. So just props dot change name brackets there. And that's it. It is a bit like walking five steps back to move one step forward, which is why it's not the recommended approach and why we should always think about where state lives to avoid having to do something like this. But it just shows that it is doable. So if you have to change something from the child component to the parent component, you have to do it via a function like this. It is doable. The right way of setting this up is indeed to have the username in the parent file like this. All we need for the name to change is to pass down the set username function as a prop here, like this. We give it a variable name and it's just easier to use the same name as your set state function. So here we have set username equals set username in curly braces. And in our child component, we pass it through very similarly to props, but it has to be in curly braces instead. And in the handle prop change function, we just need to say set username and whatever we need to set the username as.
and just to cover off props. You can also pass down the state of username down to the child component in exactly the same way as set username. You pick it up in the child component and then use it wherever you want in the child component. Once you've done it a few times, you'll be able to do it on autopilot. You can watch any one of the videos in the series to get a better idea of how to use state and props. And if you want some inspiration as to projects that you can practice on, you can also use the videos in the series as a foundation to practice states and props. I guess the takeaway is, if you want to pass data from the child to the parent, it's like the child is really twisting the parent's arm to accept whatever data it wants to feed to the parent. But it's a lot more natural and easier if the parent passes down data to the child, whether it's a function to change data or if it's a state. I hope this gives a clearer picture of what state and props are. Let me know if it's clear or if it's as clear as mud. <laughs> See you next time.